Hello, hello everyone. My name is Lady Pixelheart and today I'm going over five more tips to sell your commissions online. Welcome everyone to part two of five tips to sell your commissions online. In the first five tips video, I went over a lot of great starting tips for people who are interested in selling commissions. If you haven't seen part one, I highly recommend you watch that one first as I might be referencing some things I mentioned in the first video here. I'll be sure to link that in the I card here. Anywho, let's get into it. Tip number six, have a price guide. In part one, I mentioned that in order to sell your commissions, you should learn how to price your art. Well, once you figure out how you'd like to price your art, the next thing to do is to make a price guide. There are many different ways to make a price guide. Some people like to put examples of their art in their price guides. Some people like to make charts and some make a progression of the same piece in different stages. However you decide to do your pricing, be sure to follow these three rules. One make sure your prices are easy to read. Font choices are very important. I recommend using a sans serif font like Arial in a color like white or black. Also, make sure that your font doesn't blend into the background or is too small to read. Number two, make sure your prices are organized. If you clutter too many things together, it can make reading your price guide difficult for your clients. Number three, include extra charges like complexity, additional characters, post edits, etc. This way your client doesn't feel bamboozled when you throw an extra charge at them. As long as you follow these three rules, you should have a price guide that looks fairly professional. Having a price guide is great because once you give it to a client, they can share it with their friends who might be interested in your work as well. It's like an online business card. Tip number seven. Have a TOS. A TOS or Terms of Service is a list of rules slash guidelines for clients to follow when commissioning you. This can include things such as rules about harassment, things you will and won't draw, and most importantly, terms of refund. I once found myself in a pickle where someone wanted a refund for a completed piece after stating they were happy with the final product. They even went as far as to file a claim with PayPal. Luckily, I had sent them my TOS beforehand stating that I do not refund completed works. I sent a screenshot of this to PayPal and needless to say, PayPal found me in favor. If you don't know what kind of things you should put on your TOS, you can feel free to use mine as an example. I'll link it in the description below the video. You can also look up other artists TOSs to get ideas from them as well. Tip number eight, get a review page. This is actually something I only thought of a couple years ago, but it's actually helped my business a lot recently. Many people don't know when you make an artist page on Facebook, you can have the option to take reviews on your work from previous clients. I give a link to this review page to my clients after completing work from them the first time, and because of that, I have a five-star rating that I can show to potential clients who might be hesitant to commission someone they don't know yet. If you don't want to make a Facebook review page or don't have a Facebook, there's other ways that you can get reviews from clients online. You can probably find other services through Google, but most of them I found cost money. So if you're not willing to spend money, I highly suggest just making a Facebook page. Tip number nine. In part one, I mentioned that you should be posting your art as much as possible, but I didn't mention places you should post your art to. So I'll make a quick list here on some of the most popular places to post art online. DeviantArt. DeviantArt, or DA as we call it online, has been around for ages. They have a job offer forum where people look to hire artists, and they have a job services forum where people post their work to hoping to get contacted by a client. To be warned though, in my experience, the job offers get picked up very quickly and a lot of people aren't very respectful of pricing. But if you manage to find something on here, then kudos to you. Twitter. Twitter is actually pretty nice for posting commissions, especially if you have friends who are willing to retweet your stuff. 
There's also bots on Twitter that will retweet your commission posts for you, such as at CMSN underscore art and at underscore combat by using certain hashtags or by adding them. Fur Affinity. If you draw furry art like I do, then Fur Affinity is a must. Out of all the furry websites out there, Fur Affinity is still one of the most active compared to Ink Bunny or Weasel. If you're making a commission post there, I advise that you do it in a picture form with your commission info in the description. Many people will make journals there that often get ignored, which is a shame, especially if you spend a bunch of time typing out your post. The note system on Fur Affinity isn't great, but that's where Discord, Telegram, and other instant messaging systems are for. Discord. Speaking of Discord, Discord servers are a great way to not only promote art, but your art commissions. If you post your art frequently in a Discord server and have time to interact with people, they'll gain interest in you and your commissions. Lots of servers are created with the sole purpose of helping artists sell their work. Based off of what kind of art you're selling, you can search up public Discord servers and find plenty of people who are looking for art. Reddit. Reddit is another place I only started using recently, but it's a great place to post art. Once again, depending on what kind of art you plan on selling, there's lots of subreddits for any kind of niche market, anime, furry, etc. The messaging system on there is pretty nice as well. Plus, you can set your browser to show notifications for when you get a message so that you can respond right away. Facebook. Another thing a lot of people don't know about Facebook is that there's a lot of groups on there dedicated to buying and selling commissions. You can even sell art on Facebook Marketplace. Personally, I don't recommend this, but you could try it out. Just be prepared for Normie asking you how you get away with charging money for art and people lowballing you. <laughs> Most of my loyal clients are from Facebook though, and it always surprises people when I tell them that. Those are just some of the places I use to post art, but you can find many more if you just look around the internet a little. And now for the final tip. Drum roll, please. Da -da 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 -da. Tip number 10, the most important tip of all. Take payment up front. <laughs> what do I mean by this? Well, I mean, when you sell your art online and you finally get someone to agree on your pricing, be sure to take their payment before you start any work. Sadly, many people online still don't know how to do this, and I'm always looking over at them like, Are you okay? Are, how are you alive? <laughs> and that's because if you don't take payment up front, people can, and people will, scam you out of your money. <laughs> They will take your art and run, okay? I don't care how much you think you trust someone online. I don't care if it's your grand grand who's 90 years old. You take payment up front. But pigs, I feel bad taking money when I haven't done any work yet. Then take half now and then take half later. Take something, please. You shouldn't just throw your fate of getting the payment out to the universe. You gotta make sure you get paid. The one time I didn't take payment up front, I almost lost out on $50. And the only way I got paid was by somehow finding one of their clients for in real life friends who agreed to help me out and shake down their friend for money. <laughs> I sound like a mouth boss when I say that out loud. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Just please make sure that you take payment up front. Also, use invoices. Invoices are really easy to make on PayPal. You log in, you go to invoicing, you click create new invoice, fill it out with some stuff like whatever someone's buying, their PayPal address, your TOS that I mentioned earlier, maybe even add an option for a tip, <laughs> and hit send. Oh, and make sure you have a PayPal, Venmo, or something. Though PayPal is pretty reliable and I've yet to have any issues with it as someone who lives in the States. I think that's everything I can think of. So that wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe and ring that bell. It helps me out a lot. We recently reached 100 followers on this channel. I think it's actually 125 right now. And yeah, I'm saying we because I only got this far because of you guys. So thanks so much.
I also want to thank all my Patreon supporters. So here we go! Thank you very much to Aaron Crandall, Alatus T, Rookie J, Captain Kiri, Kathy Jaws, Darnell G, Darth Bashishis, Dylan Baranowski, Icarus J, Inspector Raff, Fallen One, Ring Bell, V is for Yoshi, and Xander McCullough. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. <laughs> Once again, thank you all for the support. It feels great knowing that I only started my VTubing journey about a month ago, and I already have so many great people following supporting me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! And take care! Bye bye